The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet, because he is a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man, because he is a righteous man, will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink, because the little one is a disciple, amen, amen I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Just over four years ago, on the evening of June 15th, 2013, 17 year old Ethan Couch was witnessed on surveillance video stealing two cases of beer from a Walmart store, driving with seven passengers in his father's red Ford F-350, and speeding at 70 miles per hour in a designated 40 miles per hour zone. Approximately an hour after the theft, Couch was driving his father's truck 70 miles an hour down on a rural two-lane road where motorist Brenna Mitchell's SUV had stalled. Holly Boyles and her daughter Shelby, who lived nearby, had come out to help her, as had passing youth minister Brian Jennings. Couch's truck swerved off the road and into Mitchell's SUV and then plowed into Jennings' parked car, which in turn hit another oncoming vehicle. The truck then flipped over and hit a tree. Mitchell, Jennings, and Boyles, both Boyles, were killed, while Couch and his seven teenage passengers, none wearing seat belts, survived, although one was paralyzed, as did the two children in Jennings' car and the two people in the Volkswagen. Three hours after the incident, Couch had a blood alcohol content of 0.24%, three times the legal limit. He also tested positive for marijuana and Valium. I imagine this all sounds quite familiar to many of you because when he was finally sentenced in court, he received what seemed to be but a slap on the wrist, probation for such horrific crime. This homily initially started out to be about Ethan Couch and about his parents. And then the Holy Spirit worked on me and said, no, this homily is not to be about the judgment of them or the condemnation of their acts and their gross irresponsibility or about our justice system. Instead, I began to learn more and more about one of his victims, Brian Jennings. And there I discovered the beauty of today's gospel in this man, Brian. Those who knew him knew him as BJ, gave himself freely in service to everyone he knew. In fact, 
he had just been at his son's high school graduation party where he had supplied the tables from the church where he worked. He had spotted the stranded motorists on the side of that small country road in rural Texas late that night, and without hesitation, he pulled over to lend a helping hand, and a moment later, his life was taken away. BJ grew up in a broken home and struggled through his teenage years, as many do, but God's grace, and through it, he grew to be a good, caring husband and father. He left behind a loving wife of 20 years and three children, two teenage sons and a daughter. BJ also served as the youth minister at his church for nearly 20 years, touching countless lives of people. BJ, to sum him up, would be to say he was a disciple of Jesus. He was a disciple of Jesus because he was willing and demonstrated the ability to pay the cost of discipleship. The cost of discipleship, which, yes, in the end, would cost him his life, but he paid that cost many times over up front to prepare him for that moment, that night on that road. Put yourself in his shoes. You're driving down a rural highway late at night. There's a stranded motorist by the side of the road. You've got your kids in the car. You're returning some items and needs to be taken care of. You see that motorist already getting help. Do you stop or do you drive on? Saying to yourself, I'd like to help. I'm not a mechanic. They're getting help. I'm late. I've got things. I can't quite be inconvenienced right now. B.J. stopped because he's a disciple of Jesus Christ. And although those thoughts may have all passed through his mind, he also knew that if he were to drive on by without stopping, that he would not be able to call himself a disciple of Jesus because he had put something or someone else before the Lord. Being a disciple of Jesus, quite frankly, always costs us something, and more often than not, it costs us our convenience. How inconvenient it would be to stop. But stop he did. Perhaps he thought to himself, not unlike what Deacon Frank told us last Sunday, what's the worst thing that could happen? I stop, I can't do anything but help place a call and maybe tell a few jokes and engage the people till help comes. Maybe he has a triple-A card. What's the worst thing that, that could happen? He might get robbed. Could be a ruse. Probably not. It is rural Texas, after all. What's the worst thing that could happen? Get hit by another car while he's helping them? Hit by a drunk teenager? How likely or probable is that? Somewhere between, what, zero and none? But there's a difference between probability and possibility. And the seemingly impossible is exactly what took place. But he was ready for that moment in his life because, again, he was a practicing disciple of Jesus. Jesus first. Jesus always. A life in Christ who's truly, in a sense, modern-day apostle working professionally as a full-time youth minister in his church. Ironically, BJ's greatest gifts were reaching out to troubled teens just like Ethan Couch. And he was able to do so because of the ability to pay the cost of discipleship. That's the thing about discipleship with Jesus, as he spells out only all too clearly to us in today's gospel, that to be worthy of discipleship with him, ultimately, it's to cost us everything. But if it isn't costing us anything, if it isn't costing us in our relationships with others, if it isn't 
costing us in our relationship with things or possessions. It isn't costing our convenience. Then maybe, just maybe, we're not actually disciples of Jesus. I like to say we are, but we're still driving on. We're not stopping. And yet, that's really the very heart of the message in a word. Discipleship with Jesus means this. Stop. Stop. Stop on the road of life to either do what is right, for it leads to heaven, or to stop to stop from doing what is wrong, which leads away from it. Where were Ethan's parents in all of this? They weren't stopping him. Where were the parents of the other 17s in all of this who were riding along in the pickup? They weren't stopping them. Stop. Stop like BJ. Stranded motorist, side of the road, late at night. Stop. Can you do anything? Maybe not. But in stopping, you're doing the right thing, which is the most important thing, in witnessing as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Stop and pray for somebody. Pray with somebody. Stop and give somebody that encouraging word who's going to need it this week. Stop ripping people and gossiping about them. Stop driving over people and into people with your words. Stop. Just stop. And be that disciple of Jesus. It will cost you. It's inconvenient. It's uncomfortable. But it is the road to heaven which is narrow and not traveled by enough. Stop and then discover Christ in your midst and be Christ in the midst of the life of another. In fact, interestingly enough, you know, while they calling him BJ, stood for Brian Jennings, the youth used to call him BJ as another expression for be Jesus. Be Jesus. That's true discipleship. Be Jesus for somebody who's stranded on the highway of life. Lend a hand. No matter what happens, no matter if the worst seemingly happens, indeed, if God should call for you in your life in that very moment, in the words of Deacon Frank, what a way to go. What a way to go. Giving witness to Jesus, to another. And trusting that God does provide and God does prepare, even for those that are seemingly left behind. As my research revealed, when his young daughter shared her sentiments at her father's funeral service, and she said, my dad always told me to never be bitter. This world has thrown things at me and my family that could have made us bitter. But my long walks with my dad never let me be that way. He always told me I have a beautiful and caring heart. He told me he never wanted to see it turn bad. And I won't let it. I'm going to live to make my dad proud. My dad's death is the shadow that will never leave me. And I will walk with God to make it through this. I will let him be my comfort. And there in those words, to a very crowded funeral service of over a thousand, Abby revealed that she too is a disciple of Jesus, thanks to the witness and discipleship of her dad.